will I hit? Where do I got to hold? Pressure, 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 pressure. Did I hit? Must have skills number 17. What is it? The zero, man. We talk about zeros with our rifles, our carbines. You got to know the zero, the dope, as it's called, with the gun that you carry, man, the one that you're using to protect life and limb. I think I know where it's going to hit. Why think? Do the math. That's what we're about to talk about, zeroing for handguns. We'll talk a little bit about red dots. We'll talk a little bit about irons. But my irons, Mick, my irons, uh, they're just a block of metal. I can't adjust them. Au contraire. Of course you can. Uh, did you not know that most sights on your guns can be swapped out? You know, if we decrease the rear on this gun, what happens to the point of aim? So if I decrease that, if that drops and I line this up, what's going to happen? It's going to lower the point of aim because I'm going to drive the muzzle down. Sights are nothing more than a visual relationship to the bore. If I raise the front sight, what's going to happen? If that sight gets taller, for me to line that up in the notch is going to lower the point of impact, right? Because it's going to get pushed down deeper. If I increase the rear sight height, what's going to happen? If that gets taller, I'm going to have to lift this front up to line it up with the top. And if I decrease the front sight height, it's going to raise the point of impact. So if that gets shorter, I'm going to have to lift it to line it up with the rear. So you can swap them and you can go to like a Miraglow's website and if you want to change your zero, you can pick whatever height you want and they have a calculator to tell you how it will affect your bullet uh, trajectory. Let's talk a little bit about trajectory. Where will it hit? Uh, football. Football is a good analogy. So you take the football, the quarterback grabs the ball on the hike and he pitches it out there and the receiver's running. Yeah. And if everything goes as planned, that bullet or that, that football rather rises, rises, rises. It's got a beautiful spiral. All of a sudden it reaches its apex. We'll come back to that and it starts falling to the earth. And we're sitting on the edge of our seat on the couch, pounding through popcorn and beers and the receiver swoops it up, runs for the touchdown. Stuff's awesome, right? Unless the trajectory wasn't right and it overshoots the receiver or undershoots him. That's all this is, man. We're figuring out the trajectory of our bullet. The relationship between the bore and the target is the trajectory. We want that trajectory, just like that football, to send that, that round straight into whatever needs a hole in it. No more, no less. And I think sometimes we think about this stuff too much. So what do we need to know to, to really analyze and come up with these trajectories? Yes, you could go way deeper than what I'm going to talk about. You need to know the bullet, the caliber, the weight, the coefficient. The coefficient is a, is a number that's basically expressing the ability of that round to cut through the air or lack thereof. There's rounds that don't have good coefficients. You need to know muzzle velocity. How fast is that projectile going? Normally expressed in feet per second. I need to know the sight height. The sight height. The height of those sights. Let's pull this Glock slide off. The sight height, the sight uh, over the bore. So on this Glock, from the center of my aiming point to the center of the bore, it is one half of an inch. I verified this on the pistols that we're going to be looking at. That's very important. You might think, oh, it's only a little bit different than the red dot. Well, that's three quarters of an inch on here. And when you see me map out what that does on paper at different distances, you're going to be like, holy crap, I didn't realize that it worked that way. That RMR is three quarters of an inch. This SRO is like an inch and a quarter over the bore on this gun. Of course, things like mounting plates and things like that are, gonna, are going to, to dictate how that works out. So doing the math is awesome, but you have to validate it. Um, we're going to talk about zero distances. I'm not going to give you a preferred one. I'm just going to show how this changes. And then some things like temperature, elevation, humidity, wind, and more can be plugged into that. But let's be honest, pistol distances 100 yards and in, most people, including myself and most of my friends, can't shoot accurately enough. Even the best I know in the world can't shoot accurately enough to copy what is possible with, say, the nine millimeter that we're gonna use for this test. The nine uh, we tested was 115 grain, full metal jacket, running at about 1150 feet per second. Um, calculators that are out there, 
calculators are only as good as the equations that the, that the creator made, because you can do bad math, right? If somebody rounds up and rounds down and these things start compounding, numbers don't jive. And it's only as good as the data that you put in. So if your feet per second, if, you're, if you are assuming that you read the box of ammo and, and it says 1180 feet per second, for example, but it's really doing 1110 out of your gun, that's significant. Or if it's really doing 1215, that is going to give you a different trajectory, which from a side note for you guys that are learning about how things like this work, that is why hand loaded ammunition, long range ammo is more expensive because that the variance in feet per second from high to low, that spread has been reduced due to uh, a very good quality control. And that's why companies like my friends at Alpha Munitions that make the finest rifle brass in the world, why their product is so good. It allows that pressure vessel, which is what a, a case really is, to, uh, to give out a very repeatable result because you've got a, a real exacting sizes. Off on a tangent, let's get to it. So what I did here is I put together uh, some various zeros. I'm not gonna go through them in great depth, but I want to talk about them some. So these vertical lines represent five yards, 10 yards, 15 and 25. I picked those numbers just because I see people shooting and zeroing at these distances. And after the last year of training on the road with rifle and pistol, I felt it was necessary to have this chat with you guys. So I did irons, red dots. And uh, all of this data was done with the Trigicon. Iron, red dot, iron, red dot, iron, red dot. The horizontal line is point of aim, point of aim. So for example, five yard zero, point of aim, point of impact should be the intersection of the vertical and horizontal line. All of the red marks are bullet strikes. Uh, there's some other information on here that we'll touch on, but We'll hit, we'll hit at five really quick because it's about the most drastic difference. Why did I pick five? Because I see a lot of people that zero their red dots at five because they think I shoot here a lot as such I want it to work. So iron sight, first shot, five yards, point of aim, point of impact, 10 yards, 0.38, 10, 0 0.75, 15.99, 20, 1.19, 25, 1.39, these are over. Uh, over the line of, uh, of, of sight, line of aim. At 36 yards, we reach maximum rise trajectory or the apex. So just like that football flying down the field, it rises, rises, rises. At some point, it runs out of steam and starts dropping. So with this zero, with this round, uh, with this gun, 36 yards, I'm 1.4 inches over. Stretch back out to 50 yards now, and we're still above uh, the point of aim, we're at 1.1 inches. 75 yards, we're at 0.97 below point of aim. So those first rounds from my palm up, all are in this little like two and a half inch group. Not too bad when shooting at somebody's chest, right? Or the side of a deer or something like that. Not with a nine millimeter, of course. And the hundo, five and a quarter inches, the 100 yard shot five and a quarter inches of drop. If we put a red dot on that same pistol, run the same drill, point of aim, point of impact at five yards, 10 yards, the bullet's risen about five eighths of an inch, 15 yards, 1.2 inches, 20 yards, 1.7 inches, 25, 2.13, 75 yards, I, it's in line here because the bullet is starting to drop again, 2.3, and up at 52 yards, we reached our uh, maximum rise trajectory of 3.2 inches over our line of uh, aim, our point of aim. So again, taking into consideration that we are aiming at the exact same spot, that bullet's gonna rise 3.2 inches, it's gonna start dropping. Again, I told you at 75 yards, it'll be dropping down to 2.3. In our 100 yard shot, we're all of three quarters of an inch below. So if you zero a red dot at five yards, all of your rounds for the most part are gonna be way over your intended target. So you, if you wanna hit right here and you're 20 yards out, you wanna hit right there, you gotta aim 1.7 inches below uh, because we know we're shooting 1.7 inches high. We're, all we're doing is, is graphing that arc.
go over to 10 yards. This is cool. Um, I'll zoom in here in a second. I could barely mark these because you're, we're dealing with such tight numbers that trying to mark these out with a Sharpie, it wasn't working that great. 10 yards, iron sights, point of aim, point of impact, 10 yards. Go up to 15, we're up a tenth of an inch. 20 yards, we're up two tenths of an inch. 25 yards, we're up just like 0.22. At 22 uh, yards, we've reached the uh, maximum rise, which is 0.22. So now we bump back out to 50 yards from that 20, 25 mark, and we're gonna drop about three quarters of an inch. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 50, we are within three quarters of an inch. All of those rounds I could cover with two fingers. The old, got it. 75 yards, we dropped to 3.9, and a hundo, we dropped to 9.14. Just so you understand, so we're on the same page. If you're 100 yards with this setup, and you wanted to hit right here, you would need to aim 9.14 inches over the top of it to hit what you want to hit. Just shooting on flat ground without any wind or anything like that. Put the red dot on there, very consistent. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, we're all within, look at my, I could cover them all with my thumb. See that? I don't even want to read them all because my voice is going hoarse. Maximum rise trajectory is at 32 yards. So at 32 yards out, that bullet starts dropping back down and it's all of 5 eighths of an inch high. At 75 yards, she drops to 2.3 inches, at 100, 6.97. So again, at 100 yards, if you wanna hit that, you'd have to aim 6.97 inches over it to put your bullet there. 15 yards, I'm gonna zoom in here. The, there, those were such close numbers, it was very difficult uh, for me to do this. So if you look at 15, there's a lot of data going on right there. There we go. I'm gonna just reach out here. 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 are within about 3 eighths of an inch. I could easily cover them with any of my fingers. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, all within 3 quarters of an inch. While I've got the camera zoomed in, on the red dot side, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 uh, are all within that same index finger. And this math is easily verifiable uh, with any good ballistic calculator, guys. Just as if you can replicate, it's the other story. So on the, the uh, iron, si iron sight side, 50 yards drops us to 1.1 inches, 75, 4.6 inches, and a hundo takes us out just over 10 inches. On the red dot side, 50 yards drops us down three quarters of an inch, 75, 3.6, and a hundo, 8.7. I mean, we're talking about tenths of an inch here for most of these rounds. Bump out to 25 yards, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 are all within about frickin' a half of an inch. Uh, 50 drops us down, 1, 2, 7, 75, 4 and a half, and a hundo, 10. On the red dot, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, again, I'm covering them with my finger. 50 were an inch low, 75, four low, and 100, nine, two, six. You guys have all heard of the, I'm sure many of you are running it, the 50 to 200 zero on a carbine. 50 to 200 zero. That means that if you zero your carbine at 50, that point of aim, point of impact, just like these marks, your bullet is gonna hit at 50, it's gonna continue to rise, and then it's gonna come back to zero at 200. So at zero, at 50, and at 200, that bullet's gonna be in the same spot. You tracking? We can do the same thing with these. All a zero is is you deciding where you want to remember, really, where, the, where that round is. It's just a transfer of the relationship between the sights and the bore. So this, we could call a 566. At five yards and 66 yards, they come back together. On the red dot for five yards at five and 95 and a half yards. So you know with this zero, if you are 52 yards and in, hold low, and anything else, man, you're gonna be pretty much right on. If you aim here on a person, zero to 100 yards, you're gonna, you're gonna be right here, guys. That's, that's pretty cool. But I don't want to be shooting that high over. This 10 yard zero is more my jam. Um, 10 36, at 10 yards and 36, they coalesce. That's why you start to see 
manufacturers zeroing sites, people are like, Ugh, why is it got a 50 meter zero? I can't even see that far. It's not because they want you shooting at 50, it's because this is what the ballistics look like at 50. Here's a 1052 on the red dot. So 10 and 52 yards, almost all of them I can cover with the first digit of my thumb, right? 1523, 1536, 1525. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting stuff. The, uh, the long and the short of it, I challenge you to figure out what this stuff is going to look like on your gun. Get out to the range, do a walk back drill. Do a walk back drill. Validate this data with the ammo that you carry. Speaking of, this is all hardball ammo. If I put my Supervel ammo that I carry in, this round is going to impact about two and a half inches higher. It's going to impact about two and a half inches higher, about three inches higher on some of these, depending on the trajectory, because it's light and fast, right? So that, that is a real thing. I got one more little graph here, a little depiction. I was having craft day over here. I like crafts. You guys like crafts too, don't you? So red is iron, blue is red dot. 5, 10, 15, 25 again. What I thought was kind of a nice depiction here, that's where all your rounds are gonna hit with the five yard zero point of aim, point of impact. Five yard zero with the red dot, point of aim, point of impact. 10, this is where you're gonna keep them all inside of here. Red dot, all inside of here. 15, all inside of here. You see that? These horizontal blue lines that I drew, this is pretty important. From the highest of the mark, so if you look at any one of these, most of them are really close to the point of aim except for these two, this one especially. So on this one, for example, this five yard zero with an iron, from this blue mark where my index finger is to the top, that's gonna be your, your group. If I aim here, 50 yards and in, I'm gonna keep them in like a two inch group. That's pretty freaking awesome. And all the way out to 100. For the rest of these, 50 yards. So you can see 50 yards and in, in, now you're gonna keep them. 75 yards, so you know from the top to the bottom, 75 yards and in, if you hold, you're gonna miss low if you hold here, but that's as low as you're gonna miss. And then 100 is the bottom. There's a lot that we could talk about on this. I thought I'd make a few graphs. Definitely not the first time it's been done. Definitely not the last time it's gonna be done. I challenge you to do this. If you carry a gun, any gun, to protect life and limb, to, to, to protect your partners, your community, your teammates, know the dope, man. Understand where it's gonna hit and why. It's gonna make you better. If you wanna exercise your rights, exercise them judiciously and understand when that bullet leaves the gun, what you are capable of with it. Develop that good smooth trigger press so that you can extract everything possible out of the gun and round that you carry. Do right, shoot straight, be well. Hey, if you haven't uh, got yourself one of our uh, Carry Trainer Instructor Z Pearl targets, you can download that one on the website. I love it, I love it. It's a good target right there. Has nothing to do with this zero, but it was a great way to end this video. Be good, guys. Hey, if you're like me, constantly looking for an edge, gunfighter gun oil. Works in all conditions, never breaks down, never shellacks. Keeps your gun lubed and ready to rock. Only available at carrytrainer.com.